Hi there guys, welcome back to Box Pred. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the fight this weekend between Carl Froch and Yousaf Mack. The fight's happening in England, in Nottingham, which is Carl Froch's hometown. And it's for his IBF World Super Middleweight title. Some of you may be asking the question, you know, when this fight was announced, and maybe still. Who is Yousaf Mack? You know, what credibility does he have? Uh, is he a danger to Carl Froch? How is this fight going to pan out? Well, I'm hoping that after watching this video, you may walk away a little bit more informed as to who Yusuf Mack is and what we can likely expect from him in terms of a threat. So, talking about the challenger, he is, well, in 2004, he started fighting 12 rounders, uh, mainly on the domestic level in the US. And he was going along, trying to work his way up. And then he came up against Alejandro Berrio and was stopped in the sixth round. And a couple of fights later, he came up against Librado Andrade and was stopped in the seventh round. So, as you do, you then move weight classes because this weight class is definitely not working for you. It was at super middleweight, if I didn't mention, that he was, was fighting at then. And in 2007, he moved up to light heavyweight, where he has been ever since. He was again fighting domestic level, level opposition and doing okay, working his way through. And then he came up against Glenn Johnson, who stopped him in round six. And then a couple of fights later, he came up against Tavoris Cloud, who stopped him in, in round Eight, and that was actually a fight for the IBF World Heavyweight Title, which Devoris Cloud, I believe, still has. So Yusuf Mack's record is thirty-one victories, four losses, all by stoppage, and two draws. He has around forty-five percent KO ratio. What I want to uh, outline mainly here is there is a trend in, he, in the opponents that are beating him. A, they're more on the world level. They're a higher level of opposition. B, they have similar attributes. Maybe Alejandro Berrio excluded, they're all pretty much known to be decent punchers who can put pressure on you. So that leads me to kind of believe that a guy who can, a big puncher for the start, and also a guy who can put pressure on uh, Yusuf Mack, can wear him down and stop him. He's never been a world champion. And to be honest, apart from those names I've mentioned, who have all beaten him by stoppage, he's not really beaten any, well, he hasn't beaten any big names. He's beaten domestic level opposition in the US. Um, he, uh, like I said, never been a world champion. He's always fallen at that final hurdle if he's come up against decent opposition, you know, more towards a world level. He's, he's just uh, come unstuck. Something uh, good about Yusuf Mack is that he has, for my reckoning, a good jab because he loves the double, triple jab. And he, he, he doesn't just throw one jab, he you know pops a couple out there, he doubles it up, triples it up. He's got a strong jab. That's something that could throw Carl Froch a bit in this fight, I believe. It's something he needs to work on, uh, really needs to use his advantage in this fight because with Carl Froch, he does tend to throw the single jab, he's more about the one strong jab, whereas Yusuf Mack, like I said, can throw two, three at a time. Um, if you look against at his fight against uh, Tavoris Cloud, then you'll see that straight from the off. <coughs> he is better on the outside than the inside. I feel it's his tendency to be drawn to the inside, which has lost him those fights um, in particular. Not saying he would have survived on the outside, but he was—he definitely has a better chance on the outside. He's actually a decent mover on his feet. Um, but talking about feet, a negative for Yusef Mack is that he's very hesitant on his feet for me, quite often. If you, it's something I've uh, complained about with Amir Khan. He's very hesitant on his feet. He's not sure about himself on his feet. He's not strong on his feet. He's not planting his feet. He's always rocking back and forth as if he's not sure, you know, where to place his feet, 
is this guy going to hit me? You know, where where do I need to be? That type of thing. Not as bad as Ali Khan is at it, but he does he does do that too much for my liking. Rather than being, you see these fighters who are steady on their feet, they're moving fluidly, they're sure about themselves, they know where they are in the ring, they know exactly what they're doing. And, you know, Mackie from the outside can move quite well, he can dance around a little bit, he's not really elusive, he's not some sort of, uh, you know, Muhammad Ali, but he's got decent movement when he's moving away from you around the ring, trying to find some space. But as soon as he moves in closer and he's meant to engage with you, the footwork sort of goes out the window and he's kind of hesitant again. So that's something that's not really good for him in this fight um, because I think it makes guys uh, unstable. And I think that without your feet planted correctly, if you get hit, then you've got more chance of being hurt or being knocked over, even if you're not hurt, being knocked over because you're not on balance. So maybe it's, it's, it's a balance issue. We've seen it with Amir Khan, he's been, been knocked out a couple of times against Garcia, uh, he, was, he was stopped. And I think it, it does come from the legs as well, as chin. I do believe that. I think that if you, you know, sometimes you have to have your, your feet set and be sure about yourself. If you're not, you're going to be caught off balance and that can actually affect the way you get hit and the angle you get hit at and, you know, momentum and balance. So that's a big deal for me. Um, he's quite hesitant on his feet. But apart from that, moving around the ring when he's not engaging, he's quite a decent mover. And like I said, he's got a decent jab. So those two things together do seem to give him quite you know some level of success from the outside. And that's where he needs to keep this fight, in my opinion. He doesn't want to get close to Froch. Uh, he doesn't want to mix it up because he's, he's shown in the past he, he comes unstuck in those situations. Also, he starts off fights with his guard up. But after like the first round, he just drops it. He t you know, then he starts looking like a Carl Frotch, who naturally has a low left hand. Um, Max starts off using a decent guard, which is what he needs to do. That's, that's something he needs. But then, again, as he gets closer to someone, he tend, uh, or as the fight starts getting mixed up in the next couple, over the next couple of rounds, he tends to just drop his guard, and then he tries to dance, even on the inside against Tavoris Cloud. He was sort of dropping his, his hand and trying to be elusive, it just doesn't work. He needs to keep it outside, he needs to keep the jab pumping, he needs to keep the guard relatively stable up, up near you know, his head. Um, another, you know, another thing, he's moving back down from that heavyweight for this fight to super middleweight, back to where he started. It just has this whole smell, his career, of that he's not good enough at these weights, so he's trying to move to get a better chance. Okay, with this one, he's going up against one of the best super middleweights in the world, so he's more likely he's looking for a big payday. But, you know, he wasn't good enough at super middleweights to challenge for a title. Um, he, I think he was beaten at the elimination stage. And then he moved up. Maybe he was suffering with weight, I'm not sure, and he felt, or maybe that was what he blamed, and he moved up to light heavyweight. And he's never been that good, you know, good enough there to, okay, he got a title shot. I mean, he's promoted by Don King. He's going to get a title shot somewhere along the line. But he's never been good enough to really, really be a, uh, a true contender. And he's always fallen at that final hurdle. And it's just, it's just not good enough. I don't think Yusef Mack has ever been a world-class fighter. He's always been fringe-level contender. And that's what he still is, and that's what I'm expecting him to be against, you know, a world class Carl Froch. So we now now we move on to Carl Froch. Um or well, first of all, Yusuf Mack's last fight was a unanimous decision over six rounds. So, you know uh before that he had a unanimous decision over twelve rounds, and before that was the fight against uh Tavoris Cloud. So <clears throat> the level of opposition he's he's he was facing uh, in his last couple of fights, not really up to this standard. Talking to move on to Carl Froch now, the current champion. First of all, I want to, I want to bring up a theory about Carl Froch's power. Um, I can't recall if I've been dragged into this in the in the past, uh, into thinking about Carl Froch's power that it's not actually as much as his record would suggest. I can't remember, but this is my current state of thought. Quite a few people will question Carl Froch's power because of the Super 6 tournament. Before the Super 6 tournament, 
he was knocking guys out left, right and centre pretty much every fight. He was on sort of a domestic European level, um, onto world level, but not like the massive names, you know. Then he had a, a unanimous decision, decision over Jean Pascal, and then he entered the Super Six tournament. He stopped Jermaine Taylor in the first fight in the 12th round. Many people, I believe he was actually losing that fight when he stopped Jermaine Taylor in the 12th, so it was a last gasp save for him. <clears throat> and um, then he went through the whole Super Six without a knockout, without stopping anyone. And he got to the final, as we know, and he lost. But something I just want to want to want to bring out here is that doesn't mean he doesn't have power. Andre Durrell never been stopped. Miguel Kessler never been stopped. Arthur Abraham never been stopped. Glenn Johnson has been stopped once in 17 losses. Think when he fought Carl Frotch, it was 14 losses, and he's, he's only ever been stopped once. That shows how difficult it is to stop the guy. And that was like an 11th or 12th round stop, uh, stoppage from Bernard Hopkins. And then obviously Andre Ward um, never been beaten, let alone stopped. And then obviously he comes, about, comes out of the tournament and he KOs Lucien Boutet, who, regardless of whether you think he was he's overrated or what, uh, Many people felt he he was you know he was a really big name and he he was unbeaten. So my point here is that I believe you may think I'm wrong here, but I believe when you're in a tournament situation like the Super Six, there's a clear goal, and you know that if you lose a fight, that goal may be gone. So I think the Frotch may have been a little bit more cautious on top of facing these guys who have never been never never been stopped, and many still haven't. And I think that in a tournament situation, you may be a bit more cautious to put, take risks and put it all on the line than you would perhaps in a one-off fight, where the goal is that fight to win that fight. You haven't got a further goal of, like, this is, OK, you may be fighting for the world title and you want to get the world title. But I think in a tournament situation like Super 6, he didn't, really didn't want to blow it by being, you know, too gung-ho. And I think he was a, maybe a little bit more cautious, particularly after the first fight against Jermaine Taylor, where he was... Um, Perhaps this happened. I know he won late, but perhaps he might have thought, "Okay, guys, as people are saying I lost that fight. I really have to go back to boxing basics," which is what he did. To be fair to him, um, eventually. But I, I think the Frotch still has that power. He's got sixty-seven percent his KO ratio. I think he's still got enough power to still be very dangerous. I think the Super Six tournament was just a bit sort of skewed things a little bit. Next, he's coming off a big win. It's his hometown fight. I see this as a real coming home fight. I know he fought Boutte in, in, in England um, last time out, but I think that was, you know, it was really a lot of tension around that fight. And it was really, a lot of people were picking Boutte, and it was like he wasn't really a coming home fight. It was more of like a big world title fight, which he needed to win, um, and he needed to give a good performance. And he, we just, we all weren't sure he was, well, I wasn't sure that uh, I thought he wasn't going to win, but I mean, you know, I called it for Boutte, but I think a lot of people weren't sure um, about that fight. So with this one, I think people are a lot more sure. I'm far more sure that he's going to win this fight. And I think it's more of a coming home fight, a bit of a break from world-class opposition, if I'm quite frank. And, uh, you know, I think it's really going to be a good big performance for him. And one for the fans, mainly, uh, to put on a show for them. He's never been stopped. Um... Yusef Mack, I think he has power there, but it's not outstanding power. I don't think, I think he's, well, he's going to need something special to stop Carl Frotch. Um, like, for example, if Frotch gets carried away and throws a wild hook and then gets caught with the counter left from Yusef Mack, something like that, it's going to, and, and, you know, Frotch is, is tough. We know he's got a good chin. I don't see a stoppage happening for Yusef Mack myself, but this is boxing. Carl Frotch has aggression. He, the question is, how does he fight this? Does he fight from the outside and try and uh, work it from the outside? Or does he put pressure on uh, Yusef Mack and take the blueprint and just go to smother him? Do what he did to, to Boutte. Try and catch him with a quick right hook and then dive on him. You know, I think that might be the way to beat this guy. A uh, very similar way as he, as he did to uh, Boutte. He has to keep the jab competitive. I think that's the one disadvantage he has in this fight is, is possibly the jab. Because both of these guys, I think, are exactly the same height and exactly the same reach. So it's not really any advantage in terms of levers and physical attributes. It's going to come down to who uh, establishes the jab. 
And Yusuf Mack has a, a straightforward advantage for me in that he throws double and triples, whereas Carl Frost throws the one. Um, it's going to be a question of can you know can Yusuf Mack utilise that, or will he be too cautious to throw it very often? And uh, in in turn, Frost needs to try and keep his jab competitive as well, try and keep it accurate, try and do some you know be more accurate with his and Mack is with with his uh, ones. So, having said all this, I'm going to pick Carl Frotch to win the fight by KO, and I'm picking round six. If you look at the, the rounds that Yusuf Max has been stopped, he's been stopped twice in round six, once in seven, once, once in eight. That's around the uh, time he, start, he, he, he gets, you know, he comes unstuck, because like I said, he starts off fresh, he starts off quite sharp, he starts off with his guard up. Slowly, as the fight goes on, he gets drawn inside, he lowers his left hand, he lowers his uh, jab hand, his front hand and he starts opening up and uh, against Carl Frotch I think that's a recipe for disaster and I think that Carl Frotch will take advantage of it come round six. <clears throat> could happen earlier, could happen later, this is boxing, that's my opinion. So uh, I think I've said everything I wanted to about this fight, I hope now you know a little bit more about Yusuf Mack if you didn't already, you might have already done your own research but that was my basic uh, outline of the fight what to expect from Yusuf Mack. I don't see much of a threat from Yusuf Mack. I can't see him stopping Carl Froch, and I don't see him getting a decision um, in Carl Froch's hometown against the world champion uh, with the support that Carl Froch is going to get. I think it will spur Carl Froch on to a really good performance, and I'm expecting him to... Uh, early on it might be interesting, but apart from that, I'm expecting from after the first couple of rounds for Carl Froch to dominate the fight and to stop Yusuf Mack. And if not, then I'm fully expecting a unanimous decision for Carl Froch. But I don't, I, I don't know. I think, I think he's going to stop Yusuf Mack in this one. Thanks for watching, guys. Please let me know what you think. What do you think of Yusuf Mack? I, don't, I think this is a step down for Carl Froch. I didn't really like this fight when it was first mentioned because I don't think Mack is a world-class fighter. <coughs> but I think Carl Froch deserves it, to be honest, because he's been fighting world-class fighter after world-class fighter. A lot of them in the top five in his division. So I really think he deserves this sort of homecoming fight to fight a guy who poses a slightly less risk and uh, yeah I'm looking forward to it I think it's going to be a great fight good great performance for Carl Froch thanks for watching this is Box Pred and I am out